Lara's left hook. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was beautiful. What happens after that is the controversial. That evokes all the controversy. Because now he gets up, he behaves like a fighter, like a champion, wants to keep his belt, he's home. He gets up, behaves like a champion, and suddenly, shockingly, Ben Davidson, his corner guy, throws the towel in. And again, only seconds left by time. And and if you notice, Lara was up close. So the referee would have turned around before before he let them continue fighting. The referee would have had to push him back. He would have had to push him back to his corner. And it would have gave him a couple more seconds. And who knows? By the time he walked back to Woods, it, it, the, fight, the round would have been just about over. And watch, watch, he said, now look how close Lara is. Now he turns around. He would have had to push him back. Now the towel came in. But he would have had to push Lara back, Ken, to my point. Yep. And that would have taken another two seconds, another three seconds right there. He would have had to send him back to the neutral corner. Then he would have had to walk all the way back, which would have taken time. Who knows? The bell might have rung before he ever got there, but it doesn't matter. Because the towel comes in. Now, let's look at him. Ken, you made a good point here. And I want to give your point some some play here. Now, you said that, you know, he was wobbled by the punch. Yeah, he was. And he went back. But to me, he's okay. To me, you know, at first you said, well, he went back and he kind of fell on the rope. But to me, he placed his hands on the rope and he was like asking, what the freak is going on? Like right now, like what the hell are you doing? doing what are you doing so i'm gonna argue i i and i get your point Ken. at first you were saying well maybe it was a little wobbly i don't think so i i yes yes i agree he was caught a hell of a shot i agree he was hurt he was shaken like fighters are shaken and hurt and sometimes they survive sometimes they don't sometimes they come back sometimes they don't but he wasn't given that chance and was he That's in the right. worst condition of a fighter I've ever seen that gets up in that kind of situation? No, not even close. Not even close. I, I Again, I take it that he had been hurt, but not even close to where he was stumbling all over the ring and he couldn't defend himself. So, look, Ben Davidson made himself the focal point. At first, you say, wow, compassion, compassion. We need compassion in this world. We need compassion in this sport. Okay, beautiful. But then after you think about it a little bit, hey, this isn't, you know, it's not the ballet, right? Uh, you know, the, this isn't, you know, it's not the opera, right? And uh, they know the risk. Part of being a champion is taking the risk and overcoming the risk and finding a way. You could make an argument. His trainer didn't give him a chance to find a way. Didn't give him a chance to find a way. And now, here's the thing that I have a question about and I want to discuss with you a little bit. Ben Davidson's background. I don't know it. This is all I know about it. And then you give me your, your spiel. I, all I know about it is he came out of nowhere. He suddenly showed with up. Tyson Fury. With Tyson Fury. He suddenly showed up after Tyson Fury had been in a spiral, a, a terrible spiral, you know, to, to hell where he had where he had been involved with drugs and alcohol and, and de terrible depression, and he came out of it, and then he fought Wilder, which, he, which the rest is history. He, he pulled off the draw, and then later in the, comp, in the rematch, he knocked him out, and then he became a, a zillionaire uh, and, a, and a famous, famous, famous fighter, and, and Tyson Fury became more than that. He, he became a, a great story. He became he, more than even a great story. He, he became came somebody when you're down to look at as an example and say hey it's never over it's never over don't give up on yourself don't give up you can still do it you can still be a champion look at Tyson Fury so it's been a tremendous journey for Tyson Fury but as far as I know Ken Ben Davidson this guy he shows up all of a sudden, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, in the corner for Tyson Fury in his comeback fight uh, against Wilder after he'd been off for about two years, you know, dealing with all the demons he was dealing with. And it was he was kind of introduced as his friend and his life coach, like, like a guy that was helping him get his life back, that was helping him through his depression and then he was gone he they win the fight they fight a draw i don't know if he lasts one more fight or that was the end of it but then fury got rid of him he's gone and and then all of a sudden he shows up 
with another big name fighter and all of a sudden he's got a next thing you know a star is born basically next thing you know he's got a career he's with big name fighters like he never worked his way up he uh, now look look I'll be the first one to say, okay, if you give me the information, I'm the first to admit that's all I know about him. I don't know more about his history, what is or what isn't. I don't know if he had a a history of boxing. The little I know, he didn't. He just showed up the way I just described it. And bang, he's in a big money. He's in a big fights. You know, he's got that big responsibility out of nowhere, you know, where normally the the road you would take is in the amateurs. You maybe you were obviously you were a fighter is a good way yourself. Then then you or whatever. Then you're in the amateurs. Then you work your way up. You train in amateurs. You work your way up to train in pros. You know you you go through the steps. You go through the process. You 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 go you go through what anybody would go through in any job. You know whether it's sports, baseball, basketball, or uh, it, there's an apprenticeship. It seems like there was none of that with him. Like I said, bang, he's there. Um, do you know any more about his history than I just put out there that that there is more of a history that I'm not aware of? No, that's exactly what I know. And I always thought it was strange too because when he started working with uh, Tyson, he was incredibly young. But I get the impression he's charismatic and like talked his way into the role and uh i know a lot of you know there's a reason charismatic that doesn't mean that they <laughs> should be in the corner training a fighter but uh, uh but that's I get right it. all right it sounds like he was a good friend to tyson when he needed yeah, a friend yeah that's what i described as that's they, what i said but uh, yeah so and now he's not with him anymore but i think having that having uh, tyson fury validate him he yeah, he got uh, he's now notoriety. linking up with other fighters but a story just came out. On, He's cashed in on it, I guess. As we're talking, and credit to boxing scene, they just produced it. They just print, put a story out literally while we were talking. Carl Froch says initially he thought that the stop that the stoppage was early, but he said after speaking to Lee Wood early on Sunday, he said, "Look, I was gone. My legs were gone." Ben Davidson knew Lee Wood better than, knows Lee Wood better than any of us. He was training camp with him. It was compassionate move by him. Initially thought it was hasty, but looking back after listening to Lee Wood, it was the right thing to do. Yeah. But the only so, argument I would make is yeah, I don't know if Lee Wood's trying to protect his guy now after the fact. Maybe, maybe not. Hey, look, I did say that the trainer knows the fighter better than anyone. He's been in camp with him. Mm-hmm. He's seen him. He knows That's when right. he's hurt. He's not hurt. We don't know that. We don't know that side of him. We don't know how he reacts to getting hurt. We've never seen it before except when we're watching in a fight. He's seen it in the gym. He's seen it up close. He knows that if his fighter looks a certain way, it means A rather than B. And and he reacted to that. That's a fine. That's fine. Um, but I would still put a butt in there. You still got the option. You still got the option that by time that they separate the fighters and by time the um, Lara crosses the ring, the bell is going to ring. If it didn't ring, it's going to ring within a second or two. Get them back to the corner. See if you revive them. See if, as, as Wood just said, that his legs still weren't there, if he still wasn't there, and then you make a decision. Okay, you know what, son? I'm not letting you go out now. I, I'm, I'm worried. This, this guy's going to come after you. You know, he smells blood in the water. He's going to be coming out after you, and it's going to take you another minute to get yourself together, and I'm not going to take a chance of the damage you might take during that minute. Beautiful. Beautiful. That, that's professional. That's compassionate. That's and professional. Everything you're supposed to be. That that's the only thing, and that's what we're here for. We're here to argue both to you know to to be the devil's advocate on both sides, on both sides, and that's what we're doing. That's all. Yeah, I mean that pretty much sums it up. Uh, nevertheless, great performance from Mauricio Lara. Uh, I think that I think I read that there was a, a rematch clause. It seems like there's a rematch clause anytime an A side fighter loses these days. Wait, wait, then um, finish with the, the, this- the scores though. Those scores again. I know we touched on it already, but Ken, uh, let me just give a boo. I got to give a boo, okay? Boo <laughs> to the judges that had it fifty nine fifty five. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. 58, 56, 58, 56, 59, 55. Come on. Really? <laughs>